What, what does Mark do on weekends? Um, all right, so I'm a bit of a creature of habit. <laughs> um, so Saturdays are uh, typically up at six, um, doing some sort of physical activity, whether it's yoga or gym. Uh, I have my first call usually at 7.30. We've got 26 CEOs globally. Um, I try to touch all 26 CEOs about every two weeks. So I use Saturday mornings in half hour increments where I have what I call coffees where you know we, we just Zoom together and we're talking about, hey, what's going on with leasing? What's going on with your people? You know, tell me what's keeping you up at night. Just very casual fireside chats with all of our CEOs, giving them quick guidance and, and what I think is important and what, what they need to be focused on. And keeping that human interaction with the, the people that run our 26 companies globally is really important. And they, they want that. They want that connectivity. And so I, I spend most of my Saturdays doing that. Um, then typically I, I do want to get outside. I like Florida. Um, I like to golf. Um, I like to ride horses and play polo. Uh, physical outdoor activity is, is really important. Um, some people that know me know that I, I like to cook. I really enjoy staying home and cooking. I guess the pandemic taught me to, to, to really reignite with my Italian heritage and cooking. So I enjoy that quite a bit. <laughs> and um, Sundays, it's a bit of a repeat, but more internal meetings with the team. Um, just getting people ready for, you know, uh, doing postmortems on investment committee, figuring out where deals are, checking in with our top deal guys, um, and then checking in on Sundays, I check in with some of our Middle East businesses and, and investors. So it's kind of half days on Saturdays and Sundays, but it's a, it's a seven day a week job. Um, okay. You want to win. You want to run a big company. You want to be a public CEO. You got to work seven days a week. There's no off switch, but you got to find balance too. Um, one thing COVID really taught me was my health. And so I've been committing, you know, blocking time. And, and by the way, you've got to block time. You got to like go into Outlook and say, this is locked off. You cannot book anything here. And you got to make time for yourself. Um, you know, it sounds a little selfish, but maintaining yourself and, and, and keeping the energy level up, energy begets energy. So um, I'm a big believer and you got to, you got to, you know, uh, find something that you like and, and do it and make sure you can turn your phone off. So I think oh, another uh, thing is I never bring my phone to bed. Right. I leave my phone locked in my office. Never bring your phone to bed. Yeah. Um, millions of Americans can't sleep because they put their phones next to the bed. Don't do it. Get a regular alarm clock and put your phone somewhere else. And you'll be a much happier human being. The digital Very. guy telling everyone to de-digitize when you go to bed. Very good advice. Very good advice. And uh, I, don't, I don't think I've ever heard before someone say, um, when you become the CEO of a public company, that's the time to forget about looking at the share price. Yeah, you get you can't. I, th look at I it. thought that that was a most profound comment, and um, you know, it's, fascinating. It's, it's, it's interesting, John. I like I spent the first year looking at the share price, and I, I would drive myself crazy. And 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 finally, I just figured out, like, look, this isn't hard, right? Do the right thing. Yeah. Work hard. Beat your guidance. Set clear, you know, deliverables. Grow. You've got to have organic growth. If you don't have organic growth, your stock story is never going to work. Neem, to your point, we've been putting up like 30% organic growth now for like seven, eight direct quarters. When we moved to a digital business, um, when was it? In, in 2019, the digital business has had quarter over quarter se sequential EBITDA growth of like 25%. That's crazy right. to put up 10 quarters of that kind of growth. Now that's starting to slow a little bit. We'll probably have like low twenties this year, and maybe we get into the high teens a couple years down the road. But we keep growing, and we're able to communicate that message super clear. So strong communication, strong growth, um, focus, and just don't worry about it. Like do the right thing, execute your business plan. Share price will follow, and it takes a lot of work. You got you got to spend a lot of time with public shareholders. Tell them the story. Don't right. don't push them away. Bring them in. We had an activist, like the day I became the CEO, I had an activist shareholder immediately in my shareholder base. This guy, Blackwells, he's attacking Peloton today. Um, and he was texting me earlier. He's like, ah, I'm taking down Peloton today. All right, that's fine, dude, whatever floats your boat. But like I inherited that day one and I had to deal with an activist. And someone said, how do you deal with an activist? Because you, you figured out, you figured that out. And I said, it's really simple. Um, I ignored him. I told the street very clearly what I was going to do to transform the company. I was the CEO, he was attacking me on the first day. And I just said, not having it. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna out execute this guy and everything that he puts in prints a lie and we're gonna outperform him. 
then eventually he'll come to me. And, you know, nine months later, he came to me and on his knees and we, we struck a good deal with him. And I could have heard him in that transaction, but I didn't. Instead, we, we created a partnership. I went out and bought some shares. He gave me all his shares in a trust and I controlled all his shares. And I didn't pay any of his costs. I think I paid him like a quarter million dollars of his, of his lawyer's fees because we were going back and forth with letters. And I said, look, I'm not going to pay for your activist campaign, but here's what I am going to do. You're going to give me all your shares. I'm going to vote your shares. I'm going to go and I'm going to buy shares and we're going to put in a pool together. And we're going to partner. And above a certain share price, I'm going to give you a percentage of the profits. He was like, what? I'm like, yeah. So if we're successful together, you win. So turn, turn something that's adversity and turn it into a positive situation where you get somebody on sides with you. Everything in life is about getting people in the boat, rowing in the same direction with you. And that's, that's how you beat an activist. You beat an activist by sweating them out. And once you've sweated them out, make them your partner.